Breaking news, markets just opened and down 1,700. Joining me now to discuss, Andrew Ross Sorkin, co-author of CNBC's Squawk Box, New York Times columnist and author of Too Big to Fail, and Gary Cohn is here, former director of the National Economic Council and chief economic advisor to President Donald Trump during the first two years of his presidency and former president of Goldman Sachs. Welcome to you both. Andrew, we got to start with you. Uh, deal book headline this morning, markets are getting punched in the face. Explain what's going on. Uh, we're looking at a very tough uh, day in the markets. And frankly, I think there's a real question now of, over how much the coronavirus spills into the real economy. We saw it over the weekend. Crude prices have now dropped 21 uh, percent, which means effectively that there are going to be some uh, energy companies in the United States and elsewhere that effectively could go out of business. So we're talking about a real loss of jobs and I think some real questions. What took place in Italy over the weekend, I think the market and investors are trying to extrapolate out to try to understand, is that coming here? What does that look like? Our 545 cases that have, uh, have been identified, is that number real and how much larger is that number? So I think all of this is now uh, getting into the marketplace. Uh, there are questions about what are called circuit breakers in the stock market today. Uh, at 7 percent, if there's a 7 percent decline, there's a 15-minute timeout. Uh, there's a Another timeout at 13 percent and another timeout at 20 percent. But this is the first time people are talking about circuit breakers. So we're, we're into a, a, a new period here where investors are trying to understand what could happen. Morgan Stanley put out a note this morning saying that the stock market could drop another 10 percent. There are estimates it could drop further. And um, I think we're now into a period of uh, demonstrable fear, dare I say, to be responsible about it. I, I don't I don't want to suggest that it that is all doom and gloom, but uh, clearly uh, it is going to get worse before it gets better. Gary, what do you have to say about all this? Well, look, I, I agree with what a lot of Andrew just said, but I think what we have to ask ourselves is why are we here and how do we get here? And, and think of where we were three or four short weeks ago. We were at all time record highs. We had employment numbers Friday that we reflected where we were last month and where we were last month has nothing to do with where we are today. And I think people have to understand that. But we, three or four weeks ago, we were not addressing a pending public health I, crisis. Stephanie, I, I, I completely agree with that. I said where we are today. So we are now dealing with an economy where there's been massive demand destruction in the oil market. And we saw the demand destruction in the oil market. We saw OPEC try to deal with the demand destruction, how they were going to deal with each other. Would they all cut back on production? There was no agreement reached in cutting back on production. And so the Saudis said, look, if we're not going to agree on all curtailing production, we'll flood the market and we'll show you. We'll, we'll take some of you producers that are high cost producers and we'll force you to sell every drop of oil you produce at a loss. And we'll see how long you can do that. So we're really having somewhat irrational behavior as people try and protect their own economies right now in this area. In the equity markets, we're now seeing people trying to price in behavior based on the virus. And they're trying to price in what is a company going to earn next month or next quarter or the quarter after? How long is this going to be? Um, is this economy going to be like this? Are people going to go out and spend again? Can people go out and spend again? People that want to work, can they work? Can they actually bring home a paycheck? Okay. And if they can't bring home a paycheck, it is going to have a direct impact on the economy. Then let's talk about the policies that are being put in place. Last week when the Fed cut rates, an emergency rate cut, yep. people aren't going to go out and start starting a business or buy a home and spend when all the health professionals and, and corporate leaders are telling us to hunker down and right. stay home. Look, this is not a liquidity crisis. This is, this is not an 08 crisis. We have plenty of liquidity in the crisis. What does that Cut, mean? The, there is no lack of liquidity in the financial system. Banks are awash with cash. Look at there's people just trying to invest cash overnight every night. You know, one thing Andrew didn't mention is we've got a 10-year interest rate in the United States today below 50 basis points. We're around 44, 45 basis points in the United States. That's all-time historic lows. We're not there because people want it there. We're there because everyone wants to invest their money in safety and soundness, meaning they're willing to take a much lower rate of return on their money to make sure they get it back. So people are buying U.S. Treasuries at less than a half a percent return because that's where they feel safety and soundness is. So the system that we deal with, the economic system, the market system, 
is flooded with cash right now. People probably have more cash than they've had in a long period of time because they're consuming less. People are choosing not to travel. You see it in the airport. People are choosing not to go out to dinner. People are choosing not to ride taxis, not to ride Ubers, not to go out and do the things that they're normally doing in the economy. So when the Fed cuts interest rates, it's not going to spur economic growth. It's going to make money cheaper. Money was already cheap and available. Okay. The market had priced it for them. Then, Andrew, what is this about? Is this about fear and transparency? CNBC reporting right now that, that trading right. is halting. If two weeks ago the president would have said, let's put a pause on the idea of economic growth and let's address this public health crisis, would we be in a different situation? Because the president, Larry Kudlow, and other members of this administration have been talking up the markets and talking down down the virus. And now what are we doing? Hurting both. Well, look, uh, first of all, the, the market is now halted. This is exactly what we just talked about literally with minutes ago about the idea of a circuit breaker. It's now happened at that 7 percent level. Uh, as to what the president uh, could have done or did do, I think this is much more about testing and whether the CDC could have gotten ahead of this. Clearly, we're behind it. And I think part of the fear factor here for investors is trying to understand the numbers that we do have and how accurate or inaccurate they really are. That's that's a huge part of this, that, that ultimately the investment community does not believe those numbers and does not believe, even if you do believe those numbers, that we're going to be able to get ahead of it. You know, thus far, all of the identified cases are relatively in places where the type of workers are service workers. People can do their job over uh, Gmail and Zoom. They can work from home if, if ultimately that turns out to be what it is. We have not heard about cases, uh, meaningful cases in places like Detroit or or places where we actually manufacture things in, 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 real, in real ways. And that's, if, if we have that across the country, it becomes very difficult very, very quickly. I don't, again, want to be alarmist about this, but I think part of the issue that investors are trying to understand is just how long this could go on for and what real impact it's going to have both on their people's ability to work, which is a supply story, mm -hmm. and people's demand story, which is, are they going to go to the shopping mall? People are clearly going to supermarkets to try to get everything off the shelf, but are they going to do anything else? Are they going to get on airplanes? I had a conversation with my great-grandmother last night about getting on an airplane. People are not going to be doing that and shouldn't be doing that. And I think those are the questions. And whether we're ultimately going to, and I'd be very curious to hear from Gary, whether we're going to ultimately start talking about bailouts. Are we going to be talking about bailing out the energy industry, the airline industry? Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.